Greetings, power metal fans. Here is Søren Weiss from the Fire That Burns podcast and the Fire That Burns YouTube channel. So, tomorrow, the new Sonata Artica album, Acoustic Adventures, will be released. And I had a great chat with, this, with Tony, the singer from the band, uh, about this new release. So you can check out this interview right now. So, I mean, congratulations, man. Tomorrow, your new album will be released. An all-acoustic okay. album. Yeah, super exciting. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have been waiting for this release for a year. Yeah. Or, well, actually more than a year, but it, it was originally supposed to be out one year ago, pretty much exactly. Uh, together with the tour and everything, but the tour had to be postponed and, and we decided that maybe release the album also a little bit later, mm -hmm. like a year later. So but the album is coming out now, but the tours are still getting postponed. <laughs> Unfortunately, the world hasn't get, gotten nah. that much better. It's crazy. Actually, at least here in Finland, the situation is worse than it was a year ago, mm. unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. It's the same in Denmark. You know, the numbers are rising at a ridiculously yeah. high level. But and, and you're also, I mean, you, you said it was delayed or you have been waiting for like one year. It's released on a new record label. Atomic Fire, it was proposed to, to come on a nuclear blast. Yes, yeah. That we, uh, From our perspective, where we are standing, we are basically still on the same label. Mm. You see, uh, already for some years now, we have been on this tiny side label of nuclear blast owned by the original nuclear blast founder, Marcus Steiger. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wanted to have the, his tiny like corner office kind of thing. And then he had a few bands there, us and, and maybe... Halloween, I think, yeah. and some others. And, and now, some years later, he decided and wanted to start a new company with mm -hmm. with some, some people he uh, had been always working with from nu uh, Nuclear Blast. Mm -hmm. So they together f formed a new company. Mm -hmm. And so we are, we are basically, we are working with the same group of people and nothing has changed but the mm -hmm. name. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, so when I'm when I'm thinking of you know rock and and metal bands doing rearranged acoustic versions of their songs, I'm mostly thinking about you know the old '90s classics from MTV, you know like Alice in Chains and Pearl Jam and and the whole Nirvana thing. Um, what drew your inspirations to to do an all acoustic album um, as a uh, rock band? It's been slowly brewing ever since, like I think, early 2000 something, when we uh, recorded our first acoustic anything, which mm. was um, Mary Lou, the remake of it. Yeah. Uh, we uh, it was a bonus track for something I can't really remember anymore, which where it was released. But anyway, that started the idea in my head. Anyway, that would be great to do more of these. Mm. And then uh, during the years, every now and again, we played acoustically in the middle of our shows if we had a chance to do that. And in, in one point, we actually had a uh, acoustic summer festival thing mm -hmm. that we played acoustically. All the all the festivals that actually allowed us to come there <laughs> acoustically, <Yeah. laughs> and for some it was a surprise. Actually, even when we got there, you guys are playing acoustic. Yeah, read the contract <laughs> dude, <laughs> that you have signed. <laughs> so, so yeah, and and uh, then finally we landed on the 2019. Uh, acoustic adventures tour mm -hmm. where we had our act together basically mm -hmm. it the tour itself already took some convincing from our side to do for the people who are you know the promoters local local promoters and our own own agent in europe that yeah. you know just sell the shows it, it'll be good trust <laughs> us and they finally trusted us and then uh, we came and played the shows and our label guys then nuclear blast guys they came and see the show and they they realized that what we are doing that it's not not just us playing the songs the same way we normally do only with acoustic instruments but we have seen a lot of trouble and then gone through uh, uh, all the songs with a big heart and, and remade them totally acoustically and, and, and some of the mood in many of the songs is completely different the, yeah. the songs have transformed into something else yeah. and, and it worked so well mm. in live shows the feeling is really intimate and everything so mm. they agreed with what we wanted to do originally already that that this would actually make a great album mm. singy thingy and, and as we had like one and a half hours of songs ready already at that point it, it made a lot of sense to make two of these albums mm. yeah and uh, cool. here we are 
here we are and and i've heard the album a lot of times now and i love it and and mm-hmm. when when thinking of melodic you know power metal bands who could actually pull this one off i think you guys would be you know one of the natural ones to actually do that because you have a lot of emotions in your songwriting even in the heart pumping songs <laughs> um How did you choose which songs to be on this specific album? Um, the hard ones, the 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 more ballad kind of stuff. Uh, how did you choose? The starting point, obviously, was the tour. Mm-hmm. So we used a lot of those songs that we had already arranged. It was like basically one and a half hours of of, of music there. Mm-hmm. No, not that much, maybe one hour and fifteen minutes or so. And anyways, uh, that was the corner starting point, and uh, that tour set list we started thinking of the same way pretty much that we we approach normal sonata arctica show like what songs do people want to hear mm. and and uh, so we had our full moons and and whatnots there mm-hmm. so to the crowd pleasers yeah. and then of course this allowed us to uh and it was necessary to uh find new additional tracks as well and uh it, it, i have always thought that we have a lot of nice beautiful songs there that have never been basically heard yeah that they never got any attention like let's say the first single we cut out from volume one the rest of the sun belongs to me which was a bonus track for 2003 uh winter hearts guild album right from japan so that that song is a little bit obscure and i'm sure a lot of people have not even heard of it mm. ever before this one here so um, and that version is a power metal song and with fast You need some solos and everything in the middle, so we just tripped everything out and then made it a nice, beautiful song. Yeah. The way the, the version it is right now here on on the album, and uh, and uh, that's uh, basically the way we approach it. My son is actually playing Halloween theme right there at yeah. the moment with the piano. By the way, it's disturbing me. <laughs> 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 I kind did, of love it though. <laughs> did, yeah, well. <laughs> did you find was it any difficult to rearrange, you know, some of the more heart-driven songs like, you know, Don't Say a Word or The Wolf's Die Young? Well, those two songs you mentioned, The Wolf's Die Young and, and Don't Say a Word, they are pretty they're not that far from the original version. Yeah. They are just about the closest thing we have here of of just playing those songs acoustically. Mhm. And we didn't change them all that much, but but there are a lot of songs that we just turn around completely. Exactly. Yeah. Like well, I I still think the best uh, uh, example of that is the first track. The rest yeah. of the song belongs to me. Yeah. It turned out something totally different. It's a happy song, a nice song that uh, I managed, and and we we got to put it in the form that it originally was acoustic song because that's the way I, I remember writing th- that song the same applies to a lot of the Sonatarchia songs they don't start out as, as a power metal song or really hard rocking double kick songs those are just basically decorations and uh, arrangement mm-hmm. matter if you have a good song with good melodies and, and good ideas there it basically works in any form and, and way you can imagine mm-hmm. it's just a matter of choosing what you want to do with it Some of these songs might make a pretty decent reggae song. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> so, so, uh, and Tony, uh, please enlighten me in the songwriting process here and the production process. Uh, did you guys meet up to do this in the studio, or did you record, you know, separate, like you know, in the Corona times and all that? Um, but, or, or did you meet up together and recorded this one here live in the studio? It was uh, like most of the tracks they were recorded live, mm. like the basic frame. So that what gives the whole album uh, this organic feel, and it lives a little bit. It's not all like on the grid, and then that's that's the thing that need it needs to be that way to, to mm. give it that, that special feel, really. And uh, uh, but obviously there were overdubs that we were doing. Like you can hear in some points more than one Tony singing, for example. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to make it sound as good as possible. And still, it is a studio album. It's not a live album, exactly. which is something that I would love to do in some point, though. Mm. You know, acoustic live album. Like mm. we were talking about this this MTV Unplugged yeah, thing. Exactly. Something like that would be really great to to, to do. And, and, uh, and uh, for me, you know, 
speaking of which, the unplugged thing, uh, one of the sort of starting points and ideas, the, the way I wanted to approach these Sonatarchica songs was like Eric Clapton, Leila. Mm-hmm. Where the, you have the original rocking version and then you have the acoustic version, which is totally different. And in depends on the opinion once again, but it, it, some people think it's better, like I do. But, but still, I love the energy and, and, and the riff and everything in the, in the original one, but this is totally different. And, and it, we try to do that same thing with, with our songs here. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when I listened to the album, one of the songs that stood out was Alone in Heaven, uh, I think mostly because I think it sums up perfectly what you guys, what I, I, what I do believe you guys want to tell with this album. I think it just covers this smooth, laid back kind of feeling, but also, you know, the more in your face kind of vibes. Um, so for me, Alone in Heaven is, is definitely one of the, uh, the, the, the key songs uh, on this album, I think. It has, I have to agree in a way, yes, yeah. Is there any other, you know, rock or metal bands who did acoustic versions of their songs that you have been inspired by when doing this album? I was alive and, and uh, following MTV in its golden years, in a way. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I got to see all of those unblocked things. And uh, I think that's that's what what sort of gave me the spark mm. to do this that kind of thing. And that's that's my like aim, in a way. Uh, Still going back to that Eric Clapton thing, but but you know it's, it's we had Aerosmith, we had Nirvana, and uh, all those bands doing great versions of their songs, and it, it, it's inspirational how much uh, how how you can bear a song, strip out all the unnecessary things, and and the song still works well, and 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 it it's it's saying a lot about the the craftsmanship of the song that mm-hmm. how well the songs have been written mm-hmm. if they still work even only with an acoustic guitar or something you know not all music in the world does that will there be a part two <laughs> or part yes, three yeah yeah well, volume two will be out as well we recorded both of these albums yeah. at the same time so yeah and we just made a bunch of songs to like two album length and then we decided to choose we just had to basically make two albums that are balanced mm-hmm. within each other so we didn't want to make one fast album and one one slow one but you know just mix the songs in a way that it, it felt good and natural and a sort of a roller coaster ride like normal somatarchic album should be mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, i think these two turned out well I'm sure people will eventually have opinions whether which one is better than the other. And, <laughs> but, yeah. but you know, there, like for example, on the volume two, we will have a lot of lot more ecliptica songs. Yeah. Whereas on the volume one, we have none. Yeah. <laughs> so, true. So then that was just an accident, and we didn't pay any attention. Someone just mentioned to me this problem, uh, like on one of the interviews, and I just. Well, you are you are absolutely correct. We don't have that, and that was an accident. But and we didn't mean it that way. But yeah, it's it's going to be a little bit maybe over <laughs> exposed on this, the next edition, the volume two. Yeah. But no, no, we're we're gonna. I think we're only gonna have like three songs when I'm checking the list right now here. Yeah. So yeah, three songs from Ecliptica, which is more than average. <laughs> that we have 10 albums out now well yeah true true um we'll see the full moon on part two <laughs> yes yeah you will have your letter to dana as well yeah <laughs> of course the kind of songs that you would expect us yeah. to cover acoustically. <laughs> so will will this part two also be out before the upcoming tour or I, i've been telling everybody that it's it's around october i don't have like the solid date for it right now but but i, I think it's going to be so that we are we are going to be on tour or starting the tour around the same time anyway so that will serve a purpose as well yeah. <laughs> in that sense <laughs> and, and regarding the tour this will i, I could imagine it's going to be quite an intimate tour uh will you guys be like sitting down on chairs while playing and and all that Um, uh, well, a little bit both, <laughs> jumping around and sitting down, and you know, it depends. Yeah, yeah. We we had some. Uh, we were supposed to start, you know, planning the show and 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 think what kind of decoration and stuff we want to have there already, like some months back. But our finish dates that's gonna was supposed to start the whole acoustic adventures tour. That's show 
and tour was postponed so we never got around doing it why bother mm -hmm. have do a lot of work that you never know when you're gonna actually need it and if your ideas and thoughts change so we're gonna uh, solidify the the, uh, the stage setup and everything what we're gonna do there later on when the tour is closer so so yeah it's probably both a little bit it's nice to be sitting for me for once yeah you know? <laughs> not running around <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but tony let's let's cross our fingers that the tour will actually yeah being helped this oh, time yeah uh, i've been sitting on my crossed fingers for <laughs> for ages already <laughs> with so many tours we've been postponing our latin american tour for two years now yeah so and it's supposed to be in april so yeah. I, and i'm totally holding my breath because <laughs> it, <laughs> honestly it does not really look that well no. still <laughs> yeah exactly actually I, i i spoke with um with oscar from hammerfall the other day and we were talking about you know like this as a band not playing live for like two years and and he was he was uh, saying that he he um lost a lot of inspiration for not you know going on stage um uh, how do you feel about it have you been able to you know write songs during corona or has it just been one difficult period for you No, no. I, I think I, I'm just about the opposite. I was really tired and and needed a mm. break. Mm. Been needing that break for some years already, and been hoping uh, to have that because you know I'm. When you're in a band, the only way you're gonna get a break is a sort of a forced break, mm. although it's health reasons or whatever. Otherwise, you're not gonna have a break. <laughs> uh, being a, being the songwriter. And 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 you know then when all the rest of the guys when they're having a vacation and a break I am working and even if if I'm sort of having a vacation and getting totally relaxed and everything that's when my my flute my fluids get rolling and I get a lot of great ideas and suddenly I find myself writing songs because I have have to put these all, all these great ideas down obviously exactly so I haven't had a break in 20 years and and now I finally got it. And also one big thing, of course, is that, you know, my kids are of that age that it actually makes a little bit difference still that if mm. I am home or not. So, hmm. so, so that, that, that's this whole break has served me well. I've been able to write music yeah. and, and work on projects and, and, and spend time with my family and just, you know, relax and find motivation to keep Somatarctica going for 20 years five more years <laughs> and we love that <laughs> <For Yeah>. sure <laughs> but yeah tomorrow it is uh, your fantastic new acoustic album will be released and uh, Tony once again congratulations with your new album it's, uh, it's thank great you, thank so you Søren thank you very great. much thank you so much and thank you so much for taking your time here and to speak with me absolutely thanks for having me I'm, be, I'm totally very very happy to be doing this you know getting something out uh, some something solid yeah <laughs> out of all these two years of pretty much nothing so <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> finally something 